I don't know if I'm live. It's... Uh, okay, no, it says I'm live. And we've got some audio. Good. So let's get this show on the road. Uh, so uh, this is the Gage Cluster. It was in 1998. A Nissan Navara, a Nissan like whatever came after the King Cab, a European small, European market small pickup truck. Uh, it's uh, a very high mileage vehicle with about you know, 300 something thousand kilometers on it, and uh, supposedly this part of the cluster goes uh, Christmas tree uh, every now and again, and uh, when the owner was. Uh, uh, mocking about with it, removing this into our assembly, it uh, started working again. Uh, I had a very quick look on site and uh, we've got a PCB underneath here. So the description of issue we got was uh, the speedo would just pass out and uh, the LTD show the mileage would also pass out. And if we just gingerly lift that up, we can see that they share the same PCB assembly. Uh, so, uh, given the age of the vehicle, uh, given the mileage of the vehicle, uh, I'm betting bad solder joints on this, so uh, we're just going to be spending some time looking at this, uh, doing the boring side of electronic repair, just uh, redoing one million solder joints tonight. So if you're in for Exciting troubleshooting, you ain't gonna get it, so piss off. <laughs> this is not gonna be an exciting one. I'm just streaming it because it's low effort and I'm tired. People are showing up in the chat. Hello, I hope this is working. Wizem is asking, how's it going? It's going reasonably well, except we have to redo one billion solder joints. Right now, so let's, oh, where's my microphone, the microscope camera thing, is that for microscope, oh, yes it is, Ooh. there you go, so you're going to be in for lots of super narrow field of vision, microscope camera, I've got to swap my solder tip for something less humongous, let's do Standard 8mm tip on this. Oh wait, my 8mm tip is trash. Let's do my 4mm tip. <coughs> I should just actually open the brand new, not terrible 8mm tip I have, but meh. Four mil is a bit on the small side for a work. This is still a reasonably old, heavy duty through hole thing. Uh, oh yeah, uh, what actually tipped me off on this uh, uh, probably having uh, salt joint issues was, if we can get some zoom on this thing, boop, and some exposure. There we go, indecent exposure. It was, we have this uh, rather large uh, through hole chip here. This is some, God even knows how many pins that's got. Uh, these very often get the failed solder joints. We also have several PCB mounted power resistors, capacitors uh, sitting on uh, raised legs. These often have failed solder joints. Uh, what more do we have? Uh, we have these the big big uh, metal inserts. These actually uh, screw into uh, the back uh, plastic assembly mounting this whole thing. Uh, so the uh, force we have acting on these is pressure on this side of the board, but it's also pulling on the solder joint, so that's a uh, possible uh, cause of failure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to have any capacitor failures on this. These, it's still relatively new, we're talking 1998. I can see the caps are, uh, I think, Nichicon, uh, Chemicon, uh, quality, quality caps, we don't look bad. Uh, so I think we're just going to be dealing with uh, bad solder joints and uh, nothing else. 
really important when you're working on these and uh, never put any load on the meter of a needle because it will break and it will give you a very bad time. Robin van der Noort says, brainless soldering mode engaged. Yes. And I get to hide my face behind a microscope so you don't have even ever have to look at it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Right off the bat, we have some bad stuff. Or should I say right off the bat soup? Haha. <laughs> that is a very bad soldered joint. Obvious crack. Uh, so it took us, what, four seconds to find that all three of these uh, that are in frame are failed. All three of these have a crack, so yeah. we're just going to be reflowing all night. Resoldering all night long. It's time to turn on the Apple fan. Uh, so yeah, it's just a question of starting in one corner and uh, moving on. I'm going to be handling so much solder. I need uh, my blue gloves so as not to get lead poisoning. And also so as to not burn myself. very good thing of wearing uh, nitrile gloves is they actually give you uh, a fair bit of uh, extra time uh, holding onto something very hot before it actually damages your skin. So it saved my baby smooth skin from many an accident. Someone says, looks like that spot is covered in old flux or something. Yeah, we have like flux on my. Well, there might be some attempted conformal coating or just flux kind of all over. It's not an issue. I don't think. It is weird. I think it must might just be bad conformal coating, really. Looks like bad conformal coating. Oh, you know what? We don't even need a microscope for this. We can just do the old, old uh, video camera microscope. Uh, bendy. Because there really is no point doing anything other than just inspecting in the big microscope. Beautiful. So again, if you're here for exciting troubleshooting fun, uh, yeah, that's not what we're doing tonight. We're just Gonna be redoing a million joints. I'll use some microscope for some of the like SMD components just to check them. And I'm gonna turn this soldering iron up really high just to make this go faster. Because speed it's of the essence. Well, that's actually not used for fine solder. But these joints are uh, fat enough to be doable with uh, 0.7 mil stuff. So this is one of the big fat connectory type things. Let's have a quick look at the connectors actually, see if they're bad. That one's not bad. We have another one over here. 
not visibly bad. The screw mounts actually look good, uh, surprisingly. I would have expected them to be bad. Uh, but we're going to be reflowing them anyway, since they're important. Let's just do them all at once. all these screw terminals so I notice that lots of solder joint failures seem to be kind of focused around this area where they've uh, filled it uh, in with extra extra solder so if you're doing this at home this area is probably a good place to start if you don't want to redo everything bridge for us and now it's gone the thing is old enough to have it all added solder thankfully now that made another bridge for us come on there we go So if you're getting into like general electronic repair business, this is a fair bit of what you're going to be doing. Because failed solder joints in older equipment is very, very common. Please, no bridges. So what we're done doing all the big ones, we are going to use the microscope to go through the, all the solder joints on the, the big IC as well. Uh, going to use the microscope for that just because it's easier to avoid solder bridges that way. Uh, but since all of these ones I'm doing right now are so spread out, there's just no point using the microscope because you just have to move the microscope around so much to actually get to them it just slows you down and when it comes to huge joints and stuff like capacitors you don't need any kind of microscope inspection you know it's good if you've done it ever before hmm. Robin van der Neid says, what's that, a normal drinking utensil at FF's? Uh, this is actually not a normal drinking utensil, it's a coffee cup I stole off the ferry. So, it is a stolen coffee cup. Highly abnormal. I don't own any normal drinking utensils, no sir. Most of them. I've just stolen from random places. 
If you're a gas station aid in the middle of nowhere and you use porcelain cups, you are never safe. You are never safe. It's nice to get somewhat done with the big ones, but I know we are not. So it is PVS up, I've really got my soldering iron set rather hot, hotter than I usually have it doing this sort of work. But uh, will it speed and expediency is priority? All these sorts of things. There's also DV meter as well. It's hand sold, it is probably not broken, but we don't need to risk it. Alphonse Jean says, hello, gas station porcelain. What? You know, some gas stations and like places in general use porcelain cups to serve you. I will shamelessly steal one of them sometimes. Just so that I can have a unique cup. I don't think it's like a big deal. Because I don't steal many, I just steal one. I've never been caught yet. If I do get caught, I will bribe whoever catches me stealing one porcelain cup. It's worth it. Because then I can say, oh yeah, I bribed someone to get this cup. Well, that's just such a good story, you know. It's not about stealing porcelain cups, it's about the story behind them. Uh, so I'm just checking to see if I've messed anything up on, obviously, anywhere. Oh, I've missed a couple of joints there. Levent Ergin asks, what do you think about portable irons like the TS-80? I really don't want to carry a bulky soldering iron around my travel bag nowadays. Uh, I use a TS-100 uh, for portable jobs. I've got a Makita belt clip battery thing that I modified. I might have a live stream or video about that. Uh, highly recommend it. Very good, very good performing iron. I think the TS-80 and TS-100 are the same thing. It's just that one's plastic, one's metal. Uh, absolutely, go for one of those. I have done ridiculous work with the TS-100 at this point. It's so handy, just have the Makita battery clipped to my belt and uh, like running around some big industrial machine or lorry or what have you, just going, oh, I need to rework this right now. You know, have it resoldered and fixed like without even having to remove the board. I've been outside in the rain with my TS-100 and my key to belt clip battery just fixing shit. It's really good. What? Something just went kind of out of alignment on this thing. Oh, what's going on? Am I going cross-eyed? Levent Egan says TS80 is 24 watts max, don't you mean 24 volts? 
the rate of quite a bit more power. But regardless, I've tested the uh, TS100. Like, uh, it will easily compete with my 72 watts uh, OEA 2901. And this is a very good iron in itself. Alphonse Jean says, would love a description of your Makita battery. I've been looking for a portable power supply for the TS100. I think I live streamed when I assembled the uh, Makita battery adapter. It's built on like uh, Makita have these uh, two port USB charger things like that turn your Makita battery into a giant power bank. And I just took one of those and tapped off the uh, uh, 18 volts directly and run it to the solder and iron. Works just great. And we do have failed solder joints on the big processor as well. There you go, if you've never seen a failed solder joint before, that's what it looks like. You have the big crack there and we will notice if I put some heat on either part of this, uh, it will melt in sections. So if we heat the leg, come on, you can see that it's melting around the leg, but it's not melting on the actual pad. Plop, fixed. Uh, I can put some flux on this just because uh, we need. It's just going to make everything a bit easier. The other joints I didn't use any flux with because they're so big. It doesn't matter. God, I. I'm almost out of flux. I've been, I've been meaning to place an order with the pcbsoldering.co.uk for like half a year now to get more flux, but I haven't, I haven't been bothered. And I'm gonna end up running out of flux and panic ordering something just, just because I run out of flux. Levant Ergen says TS80 is powered by USB. What of Like my TS100 has a USB port for programming, but it's powered by a DC barrel jack. I mean, USB seems like a bad choice for powering a soldering iron, unless it's just for like charging an internal battery or something. I'm not sure I would want to have a well, I mean, internal battery could work. A single 18650 tool cell could work quite well. In a like a vape kind of way. I'm gonna vape my soldering fumes, yeah. Do you even Solder, brah. Come on. This is grind. Ah. Uh, those, pa those are actually both grains, so it doesn't matter if they're getting bridged together. I think I, I actually can't see that clearly enough. Rather not risk it, so we're going to sock that away.
That's one row. Oh god, these big resistors look... Ugh. Are those solder joints even actually cracking? Yes, they are. Jeez. That's an obvious solder joint failure on a big SMD resistor. Well, let's adjust that exposure for you. So, I think it's going to become obvious once we put some heat on. But we actually have a crack right along there. Uh, where the resistor is meeting the solder. So, if we heat the resistor, it's probably not going to melt properly. I kind of did, actually. Kind of did, but we need to redo all the SMD resistors as well. Like, everything's falling apart on this thing. Everything's falling apart. <coughs> oh, Alphonse Jean says that Luis Rossman is also streaming. He's streaming all the time. I can never compete. But I don't care. But my motivation for streaming this right now is if I did not share this information with anyone, I'd feel guilty about not doing that. If I streamed it, I would at least made like the minimum effort. Because I'm sure there's someone out there with one of these vehicles that's got a Christmas tree light uh, dashboard and they don't know what to do. This might help them out. I tried to get a summary of a problem right in at the beginning, so. Yeah. I'm a bit obsessive like that. If, I, if I'm not helping make the world a better place, it feels so pointless doing anything. Like, I'm, I'm making the world a better place by saving this dashboard right now, but if I can uh, save two of them by proxy, you know, that's, that's all, all better. That, that just makes it a sweeter deal. Uh, oh, the ceramic caps also bad solder joints. Oh, these look fine. That resistor... Uh, that's not been really good, like, ever. But it hasn't failed, so let's not fuck with those. Uh, all of these had gone bad, though. <sighs> Alphonse Jean says, hey, I'm here, I'm not watching Lewis ramble on. I mean, I, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Like, Lewis is charismatic. He's entertaining normally. I don't usually watch his live streams because I'm not interested in repairing MacBooks. I do that sort of thing enough as it is. But some of his stuff is really entertaining, more entertaining than I could be. I just hinge on my obscure, lewd jokes. And a deadpan voice. These resistors are also bad. I'm not going to zoom in on it. This one was not bad. But all the other ones have tiny, tiny cracks. Where it goes from being resistor to being solder joint. Mm. Are these happy? Not really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, 
Uh, zero aim jumper, that's actually something you really should fix because they often are very mission critical. Uh, this is the connector that hooks this up to the, the flex board. These all look fine, but uh, we're going to redo them anyway because it's uh, just an important part of the circuit. Get my camera out of focus. Meh, it's just a bad camera. Lead flux noises. That's all of this, for such big joints. Yeah, this is one of those YouTube channels where we only have big joints. In no time we're going to be turning into H3. Nothing but, but, nothing but vapes and joints. I don't know, I don't actually know anything about H3. <laughs> so don't don't rage at me. Now these two just look kind of sad. They're not installed straight, so let's just give them a bit more solder to clamor on with. So they don't fall off. Those guys all look Fine, or do they? Mm -hmm. Don't like, don't like the way they look actually. Mm. Mm. I mean, usually when when you do this sort of thing if you're in a hurry and you're just trying to make money you just rather than look at it you just fix it anyway because it takes so little time to just reflow something but i like looking at stuff because it uh, tells me more about how to identify failures and the better i get as in identifying failures the more money i can make out of fixing stuff This is another IC. I think my camera's a bit out of whack. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's just redo that IC since it's an IC they like falling off. This is leaded solder, it's so nice to work with. I don't even need to add any extra as long as I have flux I can just go pop pop pop. Like wham, bam. You could do that, but I still want to add a bit more flux. A bit more solder just just to be sure. Bigger the blob, better the job. Oh, well, we're actually stealing 21 viewers from Rossman. Damn. I see 21 people here have better taste than average. <laughs> Mm 
Okay, oh, it's time to get some work done with this thing now. Mm. I think we might be. Well, that's for the right camera. Played pretty much every free hole joint on this. It looks quite good. I want to uh, reinspect uh, this area here because it was prone to globbing up and making bridges. We we'll have a bit of an issue there. Fixed. Ah, spotting no bridges. I didn't like the way those guys are looking at me, so let's redo them as well. <coughs> Robin van der Neid is saying Louis Rossman is in a car talking to the driver. Well, that sounds bloggy. How unprofessional. I don't like this guy either. Okay, I think that's pretty much it as far as uh, refilling is gonna go. So, let's turn that horrible thing off and... Uh, what... what am I looking at? There we go. Let's uh, check out a couple of the capacitors just to, uh, to make sure they seem fine. The Chemicon KMG, so my strongly doubt they've failed uh, since since we're we're in Finland after all life is not very warm here warmer than it used to be but uh, not warm compared to a place like say California uh, what's Let's not dox anybody. Doing screen capture on this PC is dangerous. Oh god, I lost everything. I don't know what I'm... I don't know what's going on. Uh, this one's called screen capture. What's this? That's the big screen. And I am upside down in the corner. Excellent. Well, let's just fix that. Beautiful. And we have a cap tester somewhere around here. Zip. There we go. Ah, oh, shit. That's actually... I've only got the same plug as the microscope camera for that, see? We'd better be done with a microscope for today, because that camera's gone now. DCR, zero the leads. Leads which really should be... Oh, they are zeroed. They really should be replaced. So, yeah. We're going to be looking at it, I think, at 100 microfarad, these caps. Uh, well, we can start off with a 1 micro. 1 micro, 10 volts. 
which I forgot to resolve, I can see now. Ooh, that's actually right at the edge of the spec, since the specs are usually minus 20%. So yeah, we could actually very well do with swapping that one out. So that's one bad one, it's a tiny one, so it's the most susceptible one to failure. Let's check out uh, what other values. That's 50 volts, 100 mark, I think. Has to be 100. 50 volts, 100 microfarads, place your bets. Well, that one's absolutely fine. Bit high ESI, but these are not going to be low ESI caps, but they don't need to be. Well, that's way different ones that look the same size. Are also 100 mic 50 volts. Or maybe they're not. They made all the labels all annoying. That was a 470 actually. 16 volt 470. Yeah, under an ohm 566. I'm gonna say that's fine. This is. Oh, I've got no clue what that's supposed to be. That's the 330 maybe. It's impossible to see. I can see the label where it says microfarads, but sadly I can't see the number in front of that. Uh, I can see microfarads. <laughs> something zero volts, something zero microfarads. So that's, there are not many if standard voltage values which end with zero. Uh, uh, we have, what, 10, and then the next one is 10, 20, 16, 25, 35, 50. So, and it's the same size as the 150. So I think that's just another 150 and it's measuring more than that. It's probably in parallel with something. I'm gonna just say that's fine. I don't think that's uh, the issue causing this thing to malfunction anyway. Uh, so I'm going to replace V1 microfarad 50 volts and uh, not bother with the rest. There's just no point swapping them out. high budget, I only have film caps for one microfarad right now. Only film caps. Oh god, no, that's my ugly face. That's what you want to be. ST SDTTN asks, what the fuck is that wallpaper? It's Cadpig. Don't you know Cadpig? She's my waifu. Uh, so we're going to be doing one microfarad film cap. 
So if they're getting proper, proper long term reliability part in place for electrolytic. Thankfully, it's the one cap I've missed resoldering, so we're not even wasting solder on this. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There she comes. Plenty of space, wide pin spacing as well, so I think we can quite easily sneak this fatty in there. Ah, beautiful, look at that. Oh, that's, that's lovely, absolutely lovely mating. Okay, I uh, think we might be about done with this thing. And we've fixed the obvious issues. Uh, let's just uh, have a check of the contacts. Make sure nothing's like terribly wrong in, in this assembly. This looks fine. It is a raw copper though, so we want to put a bit of booze on it when we uh, connect it. We will gingerly place this back in. And put a bit of booze on it. connected up. I, I'm catching myself. This thing is actually reasonably well labeled. It has GND, BAT, IGN. So we could try putting 12 volts on IGN and see if it lights up and looks happy. If it lights up and looks happy, well, we know we've done our job. If it doesn't, we'll just have to try it in the vehicle. Robin van der Neid says it's even made in Japan. All the best stuff is made in Japan. Hi Dave from the UV blog. <laughs> there are a few solder joints on this as well. They look fine though. Now yeah, let's uh, just steal power from my experimental lithium ion battery balancing jig. Turn it down from 150 volts because we really don't need 150 volts in this. Give it like 300 milliamps. 12-ish volts and uh, just see what happens.
GND and Igin. Now we've got for your Odo airbag light. That seems to be working. Not passing eight on us. I think we're good. I think we're good. Levent Ergen says, those don't run on CAN bus, right? No, this thing is from 1990X. Like this is a model which followed up the like 80s model of a small Nissan pickup, so no. They don't run on CAN bus. They are very, very simple. I'm gonna wipe the glass off now that we have a chance with the little needly things out of the way. Side, let's just uh, take care of that. Make it look a bit better. There we go. All the dust is gone. bit we are quite done well that took what, about an hour about an hour or I don't even want to know what one of these would cost I don't I mean gosh this old thing I date Nissan even sells new of them and if you get an eBay special well yeah no that's gonna have the same issue so well that uh, I'm gonna be signing off and uh, enjoying my night So, yeah, you guys enjoy yourself, and uh, let's make sure that, like, uh, we're getting to a point where... Oh, whatever, let's just... <coughs> yeah, bye, if this even goes out.